This is a lovely double bass. Um, it's a really nice um, middle period John Lott one double bass. Well, most of it is. So the back, as you can see at this point, uh, he's obviously got a stock of really nice tone wood. You normally see in this age, uh, the backs are in almost perfect condition. You see this bass has actually had, obviously had a life and, and been uh, used professionally. But you can really see, I mean, it's barely got a crack on it. Um, really nice, uh, beautiful quality tone wood he's used. Uh, the brake is sawn through, which you'd expect to see. Um, it's nice, slightly round at the top here. You can see various different things at the button, but um, I mean, that's one of the things that I really like about John Lott one is that he changed what he was doing a lot. You know, you really evolved from the early instruments uh, sort of 1820, 1825 uh, to, you know, slightly later, 1830. Again, he's changing what he's doing, the slightly bigger pattern, uh, really Amati sound holes. Uh, and then by the time he's got to this stage, a little bit later again, he started to use this wood I've seen on a number of instruments, exactly the same tree it must be. Um, the ribs, to me, I think they are pear wood um, from the sort of bottom of the tree. He kind of was in the habit of using sawn veneers from, um, you know, uh, you very often see in this, in this period, you would expect to see incredible mismatches of wood. So you've got really, you know, classic tone wood, uh, fl flamed uh, English sycamore for the, for the back of English maple. And then you could see uh, bird's eye ribs, you could see all sorts of different woods that he used. Um, as I say, I think this one's pear. And you normally see that these are, although these ribs are in very good condition for what they are, you can see where they're slab cut and, and the figure is, is crazy. You know, you've got a big knot here and all sorts. Um, they normally are quite well cracked. These are very well repaired, um, but it's, um, you know, a gorgeous instrument. So when we come to the front, the front is by uh, Charles Therese. Now I would say that uh, this is made probably around 1860. Um, these sound holes, a really individual to Therese. Uh, you just don't see them anywhere else. Um, they're kind of a bit quasi Strad style, um, you know, very large, very angular, uh, quite craggy looking, um, and I think they're great. Um, so I would say that probably this, this. Um, I mean, and the thing is with this, I think some instruments when they're not all one, uh, you know, there's a missing head or there's a missing part or replacement ribs. Sometimes it can, you know, detract from them a bit. But I think in this case, the front really suits the whole bass. Uh, and I think it's uh, really sort of, you know, fun. It kind of all matches together um, and sort of feels right, if that makes sense. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, I, I really like these sound holes. Um, so what you've got is a classic John Lott one double bass, uh, but obviously the sound holes are, are, sorry, the sound holes are from Charles Therese and the front is later. Um, the other thing that is a treat on this bass is the head. Um, it's really nice, really classic um, lot. It's of maple um, and you can see them from pear, uh, especially early on. You can also see them in two bits, so like a centre joint um, in the earlier instruments. Um, this one is one piece. Um, it's really nice. You can actually even see where he scored up the back there to get his centre to joint along. It's really characteristic, uh, exciting scroll to look at. Classic extra half turn, which you don't always see, but in this period, it, it was sort of really coming uh, where he's, um, you know, really loving doing that. And I think it's great. I would really think that John Lott faces, I think the head is a bit like a, you know, if it was a woman, it was like a really got a really beautiful face and he really knew how to carve a scroll. Um, this time, at this point, he's started to come a little heavier, a little more thick set, the head, um, but he, not like the later ones where they really start to get more bulky, um, more typical, I suppose, of, of the English basses at the time. Um, but this is absolutely classic. Um, so yeah, it's a, a really nice instrument. We've re-necked it um, or reset the neck. So it plays really nice. Uh, it's in excellent condition. Uh, and this would be a, a dream instrument for any serious player.